Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well, and welcome back to our number two, Utah, make it two. <laughs> Get it? No? Because it's Utah. It's, uh... Okay, a uh, review of another whiskey from our collection, and this is one that I just actually got this month, which is a bit of a black sheep in the whiskey world. It's this High West Campfire Whiskey, and I'm sure you all have seen it, uh, definitely seen it on Reddit, but uh, maybe out and about in the liquor stores on the shelves. Where you're at as well and it is going to be interesting to say the least i mean it is a unique mixture of rye bourbon and peated scotch all put together that is going to make this tasting <laughs> eye-opening probably for sure so i'll go over the nose i'll go over the palate and i'll go over the finish on this bottle and give it a final score as far as taste and then i'll also do a second score for as far as value so is it worth the actual money that i paid for the bottle now, real quick, before we get to the review, if you do like these videos, if you like the reviews, the wanders, the hauls, and all the other great stuff we got cooking up for you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that button so you can get notified when our newest videos come out on Sunday. All right, so thanks one last time, and let's get down to the review. So uh, let's get this bottle open and get a kind of a, an idea of the first impressions on the nose on this uh, High West Campfire, because... I, like I said, I think it's going to be, uh, it's definitely an interesting mixture, and I've always wondered why, exactly why, there is not uh, kind of smoky bourbon. I, I know there probably are some offshoots around here somewhere, but, uh, you know, I, it doesn't seem that common. So having one that is peated, I guess, you can call it peated, is going to be very interesting to see here. If we can get this top off. Get the bottle pop. Ooh, that's a good one. And let's get this poured out and see see what we get on the nose here. Wow, it's a nice looking color on it. It's got a, like a, I don't know, I guess you'd call that like a rusty color. I've seen it described as rusty, but I really think it's more of like a maple syrup. Like maybe even perhaps like a watery maple syrup on there. If you can see that in there. That's really some good looking whiskey. And the people at uh, High West, I mean, they do some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, I have some of the other bottles that I have not yet tried. So this will actually be the first one that I've tried so far. Um, but I'm excited because I, I think that that mixture of smoke and bourbon and uh, and rye all put together, gonna really make a nice, uh, gonna make a real nice and interesting whiskey. Now let's talk a little bit about the whiskey and its price. Now this bottle specifically, uh, I got at Costco in Oxnard up here in Los Angeles. I got it for $54.99. And for those of you Costco members out there, that is the item number on it is at 775852. Now the ABV on this one is at 46%. <laughs> the mash bill is, it, it's a hodgepodge of whiskey. So it has rye, it's got bourbon, and it's got scotch all mixed into it in a kind of a hopefully really interesting mixture. Now, from what it looks like, it is composed of MGP rye that is at 95% rye and 5% malted barley, as well as High West rye that is 80% rye and 20% malted barley. Also MGP bourbon, which is at 75% corn, 21% rye and 4% malted barley. And lastly, a mystery peated scotch uh, that is definitely not from Isla, according to them. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I wonder where it's from. Now, although there is no age statement on the bottle as well, uh, the website does say that the whiskey in it is between four and eight years old, which is kind of cheating. They're not supposed to say any years on there. If it's not exact years, but so be it. And the batch number on this one specifically is at uh, 22F29. Finally, the other thing that I really like about this one is, uh, and I guess <laughs> it's really superficial, is the limited release, uh, limited release uh, badge there on the front uh, to make you feel real special. So let me get another sniff on this one, and you know, let's let's write down some notes. I'll be back in a sec. All right, so we're back, and you know, you know, the notes on this on the nose here is it's very interesting it's a very different than really anything else that i can remember at this point after i started seriously drinking whiskey uh right up front you know i get uh, two things first is a sweetness almost like a like a paraffin wax smell to it like uh, i don't know if you ever had like sex wax for surfers like on their surfboard <laughs> i know what you're thinking it's for surfboards um 
you know, additionally, there's kind of a background accompaniment of... It smells like a wet grain, or even kind of like a rain on a black top, just kind of hinted that. It's what I, I would describe also as like a... Like a, a summer blend sweet pipe tobacco and fermented Coca-Cola. So, <laughs> but you know what I don't get much of? I don't get much campfire. I don't get much smoke at all on it. Oh, you know what? You know what it smells like? Is <laughs> it actually smells like, uh, like it's a like a, a, a vintage Oldsmobile from the 1970s? But now it's the Midwest and it's 2022 and it's summertime. And you open up the door and just get that hot, musky smell. That is exactly what I get out of this. Maybe the guy had smoked in it about 20 years ago, but quit. Oh, yeah, that's that's right on. It's it's not overall displeasing, but it, it's a little off-putting. All right, so uh, that's the nose. Let's uh, give it a little sip here. Oh. Ah. Uh. Wow. You know what? Let me take some notes on that. That's. That's not what I expected. All right, so after that first sip, I'm gonna admit, I'm a little bit let down. Uh, all the all the sweet tobacco and fermented Coca-Cola flavors uh, that I got on the nose, almost none of that plays through on the palate. Uh, initially, I get a bit of alcohol burn and maybe like a, a spice to it, but not like a rice spice, just like a, a tingly on your tongue, uh, more of like an astringency. And like a metallic sort of flavor. Uh, maybe like... Let me try that again. Like if you had... I guess if you like put your tongue on a 9 volt battery. And the, the biggest surprise of this. And the biggest letdown to this. Is that I don't get any smoke. There's no smoke. So I mean... It's very confusing. Alright, let's try another little sip here. You know, as far as complexity, there is complexity to it, right? I, I think that there's definitely complexity to it. And it's not complexity like trying to figure out why Meghan Markle is playing the royal game so badly, like it's actually a, her strategy, but more of a complexity like an entire orchestra is throwing all their instruments down the stairs at once and calling it a song and you trying to figure out <laughs> what instruments are being thrown down the stairs. So I guess what I would call it is like a, like a, like a, like a fuzzy, I guess, or like a, Almost like a, like a, like a static. Yeah, I, I think that's it. It's, it's more like a static. There's, there's lots of tones and flavors and flickering of flavors all moving around, but they're all equally drowning each other out. So you just kind of get like a, like a, like a blah, like a mess of flavor. So yeah, it is complex in the sense that there's lots of things going on, but it's unsophisticated. It's, it's. It's un uncoordinated I guess the best way to describe that is it's it is just like chaotic um, but <laughs> also with no smoke where's the smoke <laughs> all right so uh, let's try last this last sip here and really focus on the finish right that's what we want to see here I like the finish a lot the palette is a bit of a letdown so let's see how the finish goes here You know, on the finish, wow, <laughs> this finish is bad. Uh, it's it just, it's just bad. It's short. It's bitter, and it leaves me very uninterested in taking uh, another drink out of this. Uh, <laughs> this finish is just really a, a disappointment. And uh, wow, I did, it's just. Hmm. All right, so now let's talk about the overall pros and cons to this High West Campfire. I guess we'll call it whiskey. <laughs> you take, a, take a look at the chart up here. <laughs> you know, I really had an honest kind of hard time figuring out which one should go on which side. So <laughs> I don't know how to work that. Anyways, so the pros on this bottle is that first, I really like the avant-gardeness of the whiskey. Uh, I like that they uh, took a big chance to do what something that nobody else is really trying to do uh, and sort of push the boundaries of whiskey making as of all, right? So bravo on that, right? It's the kind of spirit uh, that really it makes for new and interesting spirits. <laughs> now, the downside of this is that 90% of the time when you do that, you just make something that is new, and maybe it's something that's creative, but ultimately, and specifically in this case, it's not that good. 
uh, this is the case with this High West uh, campfire. The nose, yes, it is good. That that is something that I would, you know, you can make, you can make like man potpourri or potpourri out of that. But uh, you know, the palette, chaotic, unenjoyable, and really with the prices they have on it, you know, the the smoke didn't come through. None of that seems to line up with how much they're actually trying to charge for it. So maybe it was even expensive to make, but the end result is probably less good than the sum of its parts. So. You know, do I think uh, it's almost even affecting whether I should want to drink the prairie whiskey I got around here somewhere else that I have not yet opened up. I don't know. Yeah, who are we kidding? I'm definitely going to try it either way. Okay, so final score time. So, uh, you know, remember all these scores, all the whiskey start with a perfect score. And then they lose points for things on the nose, on the palate, and on the finish based off the review that we, we just did. So on the nose, there's a totality of six points that this one could have got. I took off one point for, well, I mean, frankly, not having any smoke, even on the nose. I mean, I'm not calling false advertisement because I guess you could kind of think of it as a campfire thing, but there's not much smoke on it. It's definitely not the level of smoke that I was anticipating, and I feel like I was promised. So uh, that just wasn't it. So I took off one point for the nose uh, for a totality of five points on the nose for the campfire. Now, for the palette, uh, there's a total of 15 points that it could have gotten. I took off four points for not having any smoke or peat on the palette. I took off two points just for being confusing, and I took off two points for having an ending uh, that seemed to be poorly written and shoddily thrown together, uh, like that last Game of Thrones. So, <laughs> overall, I gave this one seven points on the palette. Now, for the finish, there's a total of nine points it could have gotten. I took off three points uh, for basically not having a finish, and then two points for being disappointing and the bitter taste that, <laughs> that it left in my mouth. Uh, so, you know, that's going to give it four points on the finish. Now, uh, equally as important to all of these is, let's get the professional taste buds in here. Someone who is has better taste in love and in whiskey than I do, for sure. Let's see what the wife adds to this. Oh, it's not looking good, Campfire. That is not that is not the face of getting extra points. <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, a zero, a goose egg, no addition or subtraction from the wife, because uh, in this rare occasion, she agrees with me. Yay! All right, so when we, uh, we add up the total review score, that comes out to 16 points, or 53.33% out of the total of what it could have gotten. And that means that this High West, uh, with the raw score, uh, will go on the whiskey list at number two, assuming the lowest position on the whiskey tasting score list, um, because we've only tried one, which was the other one, which is Smoke Wagon Rye, which uh, was reasonably good. It'll probably get beat out here in the future, but uh, it's definitely better than this campfire. Now, for the value, the high and the low and the medium prices on this campfire, I got this one for $54.99 from Costco, so that puts it at the low side. Uh, $63.99 at the mid-level from Total Wine. And BevMo has this one for kind of an outrageous, I don't even know how they get away with this, at $89.99. And after tasting it, that's, that's just that's absurd. Uh, but that brings the average shelf price to $69.65. And so when we take that review percentage, 53.33%, and apply it to the average shelf price, you get a dollar value of $37.15 for how much, ideally, how much this whiskey should cost uh, if you were to pay what the actual flavor value on it. So uh, we take that number and compare it to what I actually paid for it. Looks like I overpaid by $17.84. and. I did it, so you don't have to. <laughs> Pat myself on the shoulder. Uh, or I overpaid by 32.45%. So again, on the value score, that's gonna bring this whiskey down again below the uh, Smoke Wagon Rye, which uh, is uh, number one on the chart for the time being. So, High West. This one is gonna be a swing and a miss for sure. Uh, this one is going to go on the bottom of the shelf, uh, away from all the other bottles, so it cannot affect them with its crazy flavor cacophony so uh that's <laughs> this review went downhill pretty quick huh. all right so that's it for today's numero dos uh, tasting i hope that you enjoyed this review and if you do like these reviews uh, if you like these wanders the halls and kind of all the other great stuff we have in store for you uh please 
Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe so you get notified when our newest videos come out every Sunday. Now, just in case you do forget though, not applying to this high west, or maybe as well, if you do see a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will, and it might even be me. All right, I'm out. Have a great rest of your week, and adios.